Hello, Kai. Do you want to introduce the video? Introduce the video. Okay, so this video is on how to get sponsored and paid to ride your mountain bike from the perspective of Alex, Amanda, and Kat. <laughs> <laughs> um, because we're not like your typical people, racers who you at first would have expected to even be brand ambassadors, let alone sponsored. I mean, you might look at Alex now and think, oh yeah, he's like, fast on a bike, he deserves to get sponsored, whatever, but we never started it. You used to do all that, didn't you? And then we, we started our own thing and said we wanted to do something together so that we could enjoy riding bikes together and make a thing out of it so that it was something we could do together rather than Alex being really fast and me just learning. Yeah. So it came really easy that we could make content together because we like taking pictures, we like videoing everything and then making videos out of it. It became our thing, didn't it? Like to keep up with each other, we took videos of each other. Yeah, so I guess this video is kind of like how we got sponsored and how like now we're at a point where we're getting paid to ride our bikes from our perspective and what what we've done to do that, rather than this is the way you should do it. Because there's like a million different one ways that you can work with brands that you want to work with and get, whether you want to get free gear or you actually want to get paid to do it, there's a million one ways to do it. So we just thought we'd give you some insights and knowledge into how we've done things. And hopefully it can inspire and motivate you to do the same. The most common comment that I've received is there's so many better riders that should be sponsored instead of you. And well, they could be if they had done things the same way that we did and most likely done amazingly out of it. It's just they didn't do the things necessary to be sponsored other than just be amazing on a bike. In this world, it takes more than just being amazing at something because people aren't going to see it if it's not put right in front of their face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Well, I suppose you may talk a bit about some like misconceptions of sponsorship because I think a lot of people get that end of the stick not wrong, but like think about it kind of differently. And there's some things that don't really line up. The first misconception is that you people think you have to be amazing on a bike or you have to be really fast on a bike to get sponsored or to get paid to ride your bike, which really isn't true. It helps. It can it helps help a lot if you're like in the top what ten percent. It can help. <laughs> but it can help, but it doesn't mean that you have to be amazing on a bike or the fastest bike racer. But you don't even have to race to get sponsored uh, in this day and age to get paid to ride your bike. Another misconception that you need millions of followers on Instagram or YouTube or whatever to get sponsored. I think that's kind of incorrect now as well. Thousands, starting at 1,000. You could. Micro influencers are better. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people are saying now that micro influencers, so people like who have like a smaller following of people, maybe hundreds, thousands, not, you know, maybe even tens of thousands of people, as against like millions of followers, where you actually have a close knitted connection with a lot of those subscribers, which is kind of like what our YouTube channel is like, really. I mean, the YouTube channel that you're watching this on now has got what? As of recording this, like 5,000 5, subscribers, which is all great, but it's a really small number, but. The interaction level that we get on the videos that we put out is is really good. And I always say, if I think about how what makes me buy something, speaking outside of the mountain bike world, I actually look for brand ambassadors' accounts so I can see them using certain makeup or wearing clothes, see what they look like in them, what they think about them, and then usually find the discount code in their story somewhere. There will be one somewhere. They're usually people with a couple thousand followers. I, I don't know. I just find that it's a better way to shop than just. That's probably because you can relate to them. Well, no, it's because I can see them wearing and using the thing. Yes, I can relate to them, but it's more... I don't know, when they're smaller people, they're probably... Well, if, they're small, if they have a smaller following, you almost like think, like, oh, they're kind of like me at that level, so I could do that, or I could achieve that, rather than someone who has millions of followers, followers and then you're like, oh, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, when they've got millions of followers, they're probably getting paid a lot to do things, so it's not always like... So, yeah. Millions of followers. Yeah, so you don't need millions of followers. Again, you don't need to race a mountain bike, which seems to be a thing of the past, I think. You, we could probably still get paid to ride mountain bikes and create content without me doing bike races and stuff. Enduro bike racing, off of both of us, is just a fun thing that we do together, or I enjoy racing and the competitive side of things. So, as against that, I'm, there's, there's plenty of people out there, including ourselves, kind of like you don't need to race to get paid to do what you love. Get paid to ride a bike. I couldn't have really done what we do if all we did was racing because 
I mean, I like races. I think they're like big pre-organized routes where there's feed stations along the way and with your mates. So it's just like a big plan day out for you to get better on your bike. But yeah. I can't make myself care about the competitive side. You don't need to race to, to get sponsored. And then the final little point here about misconceptions we've got is that sponsors will actually come to you. Like if you're, you know, they'll come to you basically. I'm always in the strong mindset that you have to go out there and get what you want. It's very rare that a sponsor or a brand will approach you unless you have obviously millions of people who follow you as a huge audience or something really amazing to offer. It's just very rare that a sponsor will come to you. Even if they're following you or you're friends with them or you've met them and you might be perfect for what they want, they'll generally not approach you until you say something to them first. Yeah, you have to spark the conversation. You have to get the, the file lit, which we're gonna show you how to do actually. So if we move on from misconceptions, it's always cool to look about before you even start thinking about going and talking to every single mountain bike brand, even outdoor adventure sort of brands that are out there because you want sponsorship and stuff. It's always good to look at yourself first and ask yourself, like, so what is it that's unique about me? Like what what, <laughs> what can I offer to other brands? Because that ideally is what is gonna separate yourself and make you different and make you appealing to a brand to work with. If you start there thinking like, oh, I, I don't have anything unique about me. Every single person in this day and age, if they want to get sponsored or be a brand ambassador or something, has something unique about them. For example, us, I'd say that something about unique about us and the dog is that there's a couple who ride mountain bikes with a big white German Shepherd. That's that's kind of our unique. We put unique things about us each. About each of us that yeah. do, I guess. I mean, probably have to let us know in the comments why if you're a, a, like a regular follower of our videos, why you yeah. watch them. But, let us know um, in the comments. Like for me, my niche because I don't race. I, I've always liked to just session and progress on my bike and try harder or more technical things and sort of document it. That's how I started growing my Instagram following and I still try to stay true to that because it's still <coughs> what I love doing more than anything is... Documenting yes. your progress. Documenting my progress because it's going to be never ending on a mountain bike. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and people jive with it. People are also watching you. They want to progress or they want to watch you. They want to, like, it's almost they're on the journey with you kind of thing. So that's kind of like the, the your uniqueness as well as you being good looking. And you now move, now Amanda's moving into this. You've got this whole thing with like female, this whole free ride female free ride movement. So like doing, you know, learning to jump better, drop, oh, like, that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's part of my progression thing. Me and my friend just like to go find progressively bigger things to jump on yeah. our bikes. <laughs> that's kind of the like uniqueness where I'm more about racing and going fast on the bike and that kind of thing. But this whole mix with the dog and stuff and the travel and the racing all kind of works together at this thing. And when we approach brands from that aspect, it's rather appealing than just going up to them being like, hey, we're just these individuals. Do you want to give us free kit and money to go and buy a bike? So uh, it's always cool to look, well, it's always ideal to look at yourself first and ask yourself, what can you bring to the table that's unique about you? Like, I mean, is it the fact that you ride in a certain way or you, you know, you do a certain thing on your Instagram or YouTube channel or whatever that you love sharing that is different than any, somebody else. So for example, 50 to 1 are a really good example of this. The Goan girls, they have this little thing about them going. They, they stay true to their message and they share like cool things on a bike. They don't, they don't really strive away from that. But yeah, how can you use this niche to then like, how's that gonna, why is a brand gonna be interested in your weird little thing you've got? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess you might think what it is about your unique thing that a brand would even want. That's uh, what you've got to figure out first because of what is sustainable. Because if, if you're one of these people that's on a ride and like, oh, I don't, I don't want to take photos, I, I, I don't want to stop and get a video, let's just enjoy the ride. Content creation probably isn't going to work for you. You need to enjoy taking pictures and enjoy stopping in sessions and to take a video. Because if you enjoy it, then it's not just work it's just fun and then you can keep doing it because it could be any, i mean it could be anything though i mean that's kind of true for me and you and a lot of people that we hang around with that and all these people we just talked about but your little super niche could be like say for example you love customizing your bike set you know you don't it doesn't always have to be about the actual riding of something say if you love making videos of custom built bikes for example that's that's a niche in itself there's there's literally a million and one things you could do but there is always something special and unique about every single person who watches this video who who wants to become 
a brand ambassador or get sponsored to ride their bike. There's always something, something slightly, you, you know, you don't have to go out and change the world or anything, but you could do something that, that you'd see as unique to yourself that is attractive to other people and brands as well. All right, we'll talk about, about like getting noticed. So it doesn't matter how big of an audience you already have or don't have even. There's a couple of key points to like, getting noticed if you like. So to me, it all comes down to putting out cool content, cool videos, cool photos, just sharing your stuff with the world, I guess. Yeah, and it takes hard work. Oh yeah, yeah. Because we started on Instagram first. I put about, about two hours a day in from when I had about 300 followers. I started with putting, posting a picture morning and night, making sure I had enough pictures so I could always just post one photo in the morning, one at night. And then I'd spend about three times 20 minutes during the day, just like whenever I'll start scrolling. Just like interacting with people, commenting, talking to people, just like making my account more active so that when I posted, more people would see my post because I'm out there interacting with other people. And then obviously the people I'm interacting might want to come and see what, what I was doing. I always always made an effort only to like things that I actually was like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. Basically, yeah, fair enough, it was a lot of anything, anyone out there riding their bike, anyone out there progressing. I found a lot of cool people to follow by doing this. As my Instagram channel grew and I got remained consistent, it obviously got noticed. Same was with you, wasn't it? It's the same with everything, you just gotta be consistent, put out good stuff. <laughs> engage your audience. Again, doesn't we're talking on our, about our journey here specifically. So <clears throat> we did primarily start off on Instagram because that was kind of like the platform we wanted to choose and use. So to share videos and photos on it, so it's a great place, obviously. In, again, Instagram might not be your thing. Your thing could be YouTube, but it's the same principles that apply. You have to put out good content, stay consistent to it, and you always have to engage with your audience and go out there and engage and interact with an audience that is in your like niche if you like. Instagram's kind of like, a, or social media in general can be kind of like, what do you call that? There's a famous picture of that iceberg where all oh, people only see the tip of the iceberg. So Instagram, you only see like the best of the best kind of thing of what's been going on, but no one really sees the stuff that went in to get to that point. All the hard work, the work ethic, the sweat equity, everything. No one sees all that. They just see this like shiny Instagram profile with all these photographs and just think it's just really easy to, to get to that point. But there's actually in, 100% of the time, there's always been hard work and dedication that's gone into any person that you look up to, whatever, how they've got to where they want to get. I'd say we're in, by no means like amazing shining stars or whatever, but we're at a point now where we're, I'm pretty happy where we're at at the minute, like with the way things are going. But again, it's not been like a, an easy path to get there. Even when we've been traveling the past few years, that looks great, making all these YouTube videos and stuff, but the hard work that goes into spending the time to create the content and putting all these videos together, everything is just, comes down to hard work and consistency, really. You gotta have a drive to do it as well. I was gonna say the strength, cause you know, some days I come back from work, I'm just too tired to do anything. And I imagine racers that wanna get sponsored, you know, they put all this hard work into racing and training. And you know, like the idea of stopping in a training ride, or I guess like when someone's, you know, trying and focusing on their actual riding, to stop and take a video for, to show people their progress, what they get up to, their training. That I imagine, is similar to when I feel really like I don't want to even touch yeah. the camera because I'm so tired. Usually if you've got a deep mm. passion for something, it doesn't, of course it's going to feel like work sometimes, but the passion should almost pull you towards where you want to go kind of thing. As well as that, I think you've got to think about figuring out who you want to work with, who, who you'd love to work with, because of course you could go and contact and get in touch with every single mountain bike brand or adventure brand or even, you know, any brand on the planet. But if it's not like a good match, like say for instance, if we went to go and contact a, we're in the mountain bike niche doing traveling, mountain biking, whatever. If we went to a company that sold jet skis, there wouldn't be a brand connection or a, there's no match there. So that jet ski company would have no, like they'd be like, well, what, you know, what are we gonna get out of their sponsoring and helping out? A company, a, a couple that do mountain biking, they wouldn't, they wouldn't get anything out of it. So when you're looking to get in contact with brands, you've also got to think about and look and do research into what the brand offers, what their values are. It might not even make sense for us to reach out to a company in mountain biking that is primarily focused on bike racing and bike racing only, because that's not what we're about. So then when we try and promote their their brands or sorry their products and their brands, there's kind of like a, a misfit or a disconnect. So I think it's always important to think about like who do you generally want to work with so we work with some i think we work with some awesome brands at the minute vita spikes obviously wtb are a really good example of this so wtb 
in my eyes, stand for like adventure. Wilderness trail bikes stand for adventure, getting out there. They're not primarily all about bike racing. So for both of us, they love what we do and we love them as a brand. And their logo is of a wolf. So <laughs> there's kind of like a cool little vibe going on there as well. So it's always good to think about like, think really think about and do your research into the brand you want to work with. And that will take you very, very far. All right, so then we talk about how you actually get in contact with these brands. If I was if I was going from ground zero and wanted to go and reach out to a brand, make sure you do your research. And in that in this respect, it means finding the right person to speak to at that brand. Say for example, you wanted to go and you wanted a bike sponsor. You wanted to be sponsored by Vitas Bikes or a different company, whatever. You want to try and find the person that deals, who is the decision maker in the marketing department say. There's no point you emailing or trying to speak to like a generic customer service email because then you will end up getting pulled in with all these other emails and all these other people who are probably asking you the same thing. So asking this company the same thing. And I, I, obviously we don't know inside what a bike company is like from the inside, but I can probably guarantee that the amount of emails and contact requests they get for sponsorship is massive. And that's probably most most brands, like people wanting free stuff, people wanting to get paid to use the brand's products. So it's really important to almost think about going the extra mile and finding the right person to speak to at that brand or at that company and go from there and starting to build a relationship with that person. So whenever I spoke to a brand, I've never gone in with the mindset of like, here's what I want out of this deal. I've always sparked a conversation and found something between the brand and our brand that's a connection. So then you're already starting to build that relationship and thinking in the long term. I will never try and strike a deal as such on the first date or whatever, like or the first, <laughs> or the first email contact or phone conversation. It could take maybe a couple of back and forth emails of finding the right person to start with, getting a conversation going, really figuring out what this person is like and what they stand for as, as a brand. I'd always think about asking them if they would want to see something. So say if you have a proposal together, maybe that's another one for a video we could do of like how to create a proposal. You should let us know in the comments as well if you would like us to do that video. Let us know in the comments if you want to know how to create a proper proposal and maybe we may make a video on it. You wanna put, if you've got a proposal ready or some sort of ideas on paper you wanna share with this brand, I'd always think about like, not just like almost, not shoving the, all these ideas in their face. Basically tell them you've got a cool idea, would it be okay to share with them this cool idea? And then obviously the conversation goes from there and that's the way I would personally go with speaking to a brand. So to wrap it up, what you do once you're sponsored. So you make sure that you put out really cool content consistently, <coughs> taking photos, videos, whatever it is that you do to share um, what you want to share. Obviously when you work with a brand, you'll have some sort of an agreement for like what they expect from you and what you expect from the brand. Obviously it's going to involve some sort of content creation, whether that's photos, videos, it could even be written articles. You want to make sure you deliver on on what you on what you promise. So don't you know don't tell a brand that you can deliver all this stuff and then not do anything because that the mountain bike industry is a very small industry, so word does get around. So you want to try and keep relationships, keep good relationships going, keep good friendships going. And like Amanda said, always think about like where or well, I'm always thinking about negotiating and thinking about the future of the brands that we're working with. So how we can add to what they're already doing, how we can extend the sponsorship, how we can extend brand deals. Cause that, you'd be surprised that that opens doors for people. Anyway, we'll wrap this video up. I hope this video has been useful to you about learning from our experience, what we've gone through to- How to relate it to what you're doing yourself. I mean, it's just sharing a different story and a different way of doing things. Yeah. So for some reason, the video seemed to end and my camera stopped recording. So basically that was the end of the video. If you do if you do need any more help with, you know, pointers on getting sponsored, how to write proposals or anything around the topic of becoming a brand ambassador, pop your question in the comment below. As well, if you've not already checked it out, Amanda has set up an Etsy store with some real cool merchandise in there. So t-shirts, long and short sleeve, 
mugs, all sorts of cool stuff which are designs of our own. So if you do buy any of the merch from there, that will go towards supporting the channel and all our future adventures. So there's a link in the description below, go check it out. And as well, give this video a thumbs up, it helps us grow massively. And as well, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, click in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, click subscribe and the bell notification so you don't miss any future videos and look forward to seeing you in the next video.